Hello friends, today in this video, I am going to discuss about the properties of restriction enzyme. Okay, so to know the properties of the restriction enzyme, at first you have to know what is restriction enzyme. In my previous video, I discussed about the restriction and modification system where I talked about the restriction enzyme. So here in this video, again, I want to discuss about the restriction enzyme shortly so that you can relate with all these topics okay so at first what is restriction enzyme restriction enzyme is a defense mechanism of the bacterial cell which restrict or inactivated the foreign dna entered into the bacterial cell and this and the role of this restriction enzyme is to cut or cleave those foreign DNA which entered into the bacterial cell. So now here, see, there is a bacterial cell is present, and this is the rest, this is the genomic DNA of this bacteria. And here a foreign DNA is present. So this is the own DNA of this bacteria. This is the bacteria's own DNA, and here a foreign DNA that is maybe this. DNA is come from the viral infection that is the virus DNA viral DNA so this is a foreign DNA and now here are some restriction enzymes are present in this bacterial cell which particularly recognize a particular sequence in the foreign DNA and then cut or cliff those foreign DNA into small fragments okay so this is the role of restriction enzyme and now to cut or cleave this foreign DNA at first this restriction enzyme have to recognize a particular sequence and that sequence is called the recognition sequence. So this is my first topic and now I discuss about the recognition sequence and this recognition sequence have three properties. So now I discuss about the three properties of this recognition sequence okay so recognition sequence the first property of this recognition sequence is this recognition sequence is always double stranded dna that means the restriction enzymes only recognize the double stranded dna as a recognition sequence so the first point is they are always they are only they are only double stranded dna okay so this is the first point the this recognition sequence is always double stranded dna not single stranded okay and now the second now the second point is this recognition sequence is also called the palindromic sequence okay so let me write palindromic sequence palindromic sequence okay and now what is called the palindromic sequence now let me write a risk let me write a recognition sequence like this 5 prime G A A T T C 3 prime 5 prime G A A T T C 3 prime. Now this is a recognition sequence and this sequence is recognized by a particular restriction enzyme called the ECO R1. This sequence is recognized by ECO R1 restriction enzyme. Okay, so now come come back to this point, the palindromic sequence. Now, what is called the palindrome? The palindrome means a word or a sequence which is same when we read this word or sequence from forward direction or in backward direction. That means this word or sequence is same when we read it from this direction or from that direction so let me write 
a palindrome se palindrome sequence like m a d a m now this is called the madam and here now now read this sequence or word from this direction first now at first m a d a m and now if you read this sequence from the backward direction like this sequence this direction then also you can get the same meaning that is the m a d a m m a d a m madam okay so this type of sequence of this type of word is called the palindrome okay and now come back to this recognition sequence why this recognition sequence is called the palindromic sequence this recognition sequence is called the palindromic sequence because if we read this recognition sequence from the five prime end in both strand we will get the same same sequence that means if we read this sequence from this direction in the five prime end upper strand then we get g a a t t c and now in this direction in the lower strand we will get the same sequence that is g a a t t c and that's why this recognition sequence is called the palindromic sequence okay so this is the another properties of the recognition sequence okay so now the third and last property of this recognition sequence is the size of the recognition sequence that means how many nucleotide are present in one recognition sequence so now let me write the third point third point is the size of the recognition sequence okay so this this recognition sequence can be can made up of made up of six or eight base pair and sometimes it can contain four nucleotide okay so let me write it may be six base pair or eight base pair or sometimes four base pair okay so here this this sequence this recognition sequence for eco r1 is a six base pair sequence okay so this is the this is the all properties of the recognition sequence okay now i will discuss about the nomenclature of restriction enzyme so as for example here three different restriction enzymes are present that is the eco r1 bam h1 and hin d3 okay and the organisms from which these restriction enzymes are isolated that are the Escherichia coli for eco r1 and bacillus amyloliquefaciens for bam h1 and hemophilus influenzae for hin d3 okay and these are the recognition sequence for this restriction enzymes okay so now so now the question is what this name of this restriction enzyme signify so now at first the first name so now i want to define the significance of this name okay so that is the nomenclature okay so at first the first capital letter what this first capital letter signify this first capital letter that is for equal r1 that is e for bam h1 for b and in d3 for h okay so what this capital letter signify this capital letter signify the genus name of the organism from which this restriction enzymes are isolated so for eco r1 the organism is escherichia coli and the genus name of this escherichia coli is escherichia and the first letter of this genus name is e so this e signify the escherichia for bam h1 the b stands for the bacillus that is the genus name so the b stands for bacillus and here h for hemophilus 
okay so h is hemophilus so the first name so let me write the the first capital letter signify the genus genus name of the organism from which this restriction enzymes are isolated okay so now so so this is done and now the second two small letter so now what this what this second two small letters signify the second two small letters signify the species from which the restriction enzymes are isolated so the second second small letter second two small letter signify the species name species name okay so here for eco r1 the species name is coli so the first two word is co so here the co is present and for bam h1 the species name is amylo liquefaciens so the first two is am here am is present for hint 3 that is the species name is influenzae that is in so here the in is present so the second so the second two letter second two small letters signify the species name okay so now what this third name signify this third word this third letter signify the strain from which this from which this restriction is isolated that means the organism the which type of strain of these organisms from which the this restriction enzymes are isolated okay so for Estrechia coli this r from the r strain of Estrechia coli this restriction enzyme is isolated so let me write the third letter signify the signify the strain name strain name okay so for bam h1 the h from the h strain of bacillus amino liquefaciens the bam h1 restriction enzyme is isolated so that's why the h and for d the hemophil the d strain of hemophilus influenzae this in d3 restriction enzyme is isolated so now the last number that is here for eco r1 that is one for damage one for one and for him d3 that is three so what this number signify this number signify the order of identification of this enzyme so let me write the fourth the fourth number signify the order of identification of the enzyme okay so that means so for eco r1 this number is 1 so the in in the strain of r of eco eco for the strain of r of e coli the eco r1 restriction enzyme is first discovered that means the eco r1 restriction enzyme is first discovered in r strain of e coli so here in hin d3 the hin d3 restriction enzyme is discovered from the d strain of hemophilus influenzae in the third time okay so the this fourth fourth number is signify the order of identification of the restriction enzyme okay so in the whole at first the capital letter signify the genus name then the small two 
letter signify the species name then the r so sorry then the this letter signify then the next letter signify the strain name and the fourth number signify the order of identification of the enzyme okay so this is the whole nomenclature of the restriction enzyme now i will discuss about the restriction pattern now what is restriction pattern after cutting or cleaving the dna with a particular restriction enzyme at a particular sequence then the dna will present in two forms or in two patterns and that patterns is called the restriction pattern okay so that means the restriction enzyme can cut the dna in two ways and produce the dna which present which is present in two forms or two patterns that are the sticky end or the blunt end okay so at first i discuss about the sticky end okay so here the sticky end is also called the cohesive end or staggered end okay so now to explain the sticky end at first i use eco r1 as an example okay so now look at this this is a particular sequence that is 5 prime g a a t t c which is recognized by this eco r1 restriction enzyme and after recognizing this particular sequence this eco r1 restriction enzyme cut this dna at the phosphodiester bond in between these two nucleotides at the 5 prime end of the both stand so you can see that they can cut here and here so you can see that this is not a parallel cut that means they do not cut in the same position of the dna okay so they cut in different position and then then you can see that two fragments are present here like this and you can see there is a single standard structure single standard short single standard overhang is present and as there is a 5 prime phosphate group is present at the end position so that this single standard overhang structure is called the 5 prime overhang that is a single standard structure single standard end so this single standard form is called the 5 prime overhang so let me write this is the 5 prime overhang 5 prime over this and this are the 5 prime overhang structure okay so depending on the overhang structure the sticky end can be divided into two types that is the 5 prime structure 5 prime overhang and another is 3 prime overhang another is 3 prime overhang that means at the end the 3 prime OH will be present so for example the KPN1 which is another restriction enzyme which recognize a particular sequence that is 5 prime GG TACC 3 prime sequence and after recognizes, recognizing this sequence then this KPN1 cut the phosphorester bond in between two nucleotides in the three prime end of the both stand and then they will get, give another sticky end structure like this like this sticky end structure okay that is the overhang single standard overhang structure and and you can see that at the end a three prime OH group is present and that's why this single standard single standard overhang structure is called the three prime overhang okay so these are the these are the two types of sticky end and now why this structure is called sticky end because as these two single standard structures are complementary to each other complementary to the, each other these two nucleotide single standard nucleotide structure is complementary to each other so when we bring these two new two dna strand to each other then they can base pair with each other so easily very easily so that's why this 
single stranded this two single strand single stranded structure is called the sticky end structure okay so now the another restriction pattern is the blunt end okay so now at first to explain the blunt ended cut i take small one restriction enzyme as for example okay and this small one restriction enzyme recognize this particular sequence that is a 5 prime ccc ggg 3 prime sequence and it produce a parallel cut in the same position of the both stand but in the opposite side okay so this is called the blunt ended cut that is the parallel cut and then produce this type of two fragments okay so these are the blunt ended cut and produce 5 prime ccc 3 prime gg this type of blunt ended cut okay and remember that this blunt ended cut require more energy than sticky ended cut to rejoin or recombine because in sticky ended cut they produce a single stranded overhang which can complementary base pair to each other so that they can easily recombine or rejoin but here they have no overhang so they require more energy to rejoin or recombine okay so remember that this is the two restriction pattern that is a sticky and blunting okay now depending on the source and cleavage action the restriction enzymes differentiated into three types and that are the isocytomer neocytomer and isocodimer okay so at first we discuss about the isocytomer isocytomers are any two restriction enzymes which came from different source that means they they are isolated from different organisms but they recognize the same sequence and cut in the same position so here for example these two restriction enzymes are called isocytomers because they came from different source but recognize the same sequence that is 5 prime g a g c t c 3 prime sequence okay so they recognize the same sequence and cut in the same position both cut in this position and produce same 5 prime overhang okay so this type of restriction enzymes are called the isocytomers and now the second type is the neocytomer now what is neocytomer Neocytomers are any two restriction enzymes which like isocytomer came from same came from different source and recognize the same sequence but unlike isocytomer they cut the same sequence in different position so here for example this sma1 and sma1 are called neocytomers because this sma1 and sma1 <clears throat> recognize this particular sequence both recognize the same sequence that is the 5 prime ccc ggg 3 prime sequence but sma1 cut this sequence in the middle position and sma1 cut it at the end extreme end position so they like isocytomer they come from different source but they come from different source but they <clears throat> recognize the same sequence like isocytomer but they cut in the different position but isocytomer cut in same position okay so this is the difference and similarity between the neocytomer and isocytomer and the last type is the isocodimer what is isocodimer isocodimer is another type where <coughs> two restriction enzymes two restriction enzyme also come from different source that means they are isolated from different organism but remember that this is the main point they recognize different sequence they recognize different sequence but after cutting those sequence they produce the same overhang okay so for example this is the bam h1 and mb1 both are called both are called the isocodimer because this BAM H1 recognize the sequence that is 5 prime G G A T C C 3 prime. Okay. And MBO1 recognize N 5 prime N. N means any nucleotide then G A T C N 3 prime. So this they recognize different sequence, but after cutting this 
in this position bam h1 produce a 5 prime gatc overhang okay in both stand and now here you can see that after cutting in this position also mbo1 produce a 5 prime gatc overhang so the so the i so they are called isocotemots because they they came from different source recognize different recognition sequence but after cutting different sequence they produce the same same single standard overhang okay so these are the difference and similarities between the isocizomer neocizomer and isocodemers okay so these are the types and these are the all properties of restriction enzyme okay thank you for watching this video